Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush. Today I'm going to be showing you one of the best games I have played on Ensk in a while. For this game, we are in the encounter game mode, and I'm in my WZ131, which is for this match making put me in the middle of the pack tier wise. So when you're on Ensk, what you want to do, the first thing you need to do is you need to look at the enemy team lineup, but you need to focus on the RD. So in this case, the enemy has three RD. When the enemy has three RD, you can never go field on this map. It just doesn't work out because there's zero RD cover in the field. And so as a light tank driver, that puts me in a bit of a predicament because the only other option on Ensk is to go to the city. And as I was also reading the team lineup, like you'll notice they also have an IS-2 and a Tiger. And as a WZ-131, brawling in a city when the enemy has an IS-2 and a Tiger isn't that great of an option. However, it is better than dealing with three RD, and so I do opt to take that. Now, for this, like you can expect the Tiger and the IS-2 to go to the city. In this game, I got really lucky because obviously, if you take a look at the map, they are nowhere near the city. The Tiger and the IS-2 were actually spotted in K0, and that's gonna be one of the primary reasons this game turns out so well for me is because their strongest city tanks didn't go to the city, and it just kind of turns out that that happened. So uh, we're gonna be able to brawl the city, but first things first, I always like to check down the middle of this map, especially if their heavies are spotted in K0, because the question kind of becomes like, who the hell is going to the city? Is anyone maybe sitting? Sitting J6, just trying to defend that flank that's weak or whatever, etc., etc. So that was kind of like my mindset. Because their heavies weren't spotted in going to the city, I was kind of like, maybe they didn't send anyone to the city. And you could kind of expect someone to be sitting at J6 or so as a result of that. So that's happened. We're now in E3, and the reason I've gone to E3 is because we saw that VK. I kind of expected at least one tank to be here. And I'm going to be camping this corner with this IS, effectively creating a 600 alpha damage uh, surprise for the for anyone who drives around this corner unfortunately the is damages the vk's track it doesn't do damage but we're able to back up put it onto the vk and then once this is actually reloads we'll be able to get the kill in the i or the is gets the kill and uh, the vk's dead and at this point in time, if you take a look at the map, you'll notice they're just going to push through the zero line. Now, that's to be expected, right? The enemy team was very medium heavy. Both of their heavies went to the zero line anyways, and so it's kind of like you could expect them to push through the, the field. And what I'm going to do as a response to that is I'm going to be going back to base. Instead of pushing through their city, that would be a bad play right now. I decide to go back to base and hopefully shoot at them as they drive into us, and that's kind of the rough plan right here. Unfortunately, because we didn't have anyone in the mid, you can see the T20 is able to drive up, and that's actually going to be a major distraction throughout this entire game, because what's going to happen is as this T20 drives through the mid, they're going to be able to push down the zero line, and I would much rather be shooting at like the Progetto 46 and the P44 who are on the zero line, as opposed to this T20 who's going for Arties. So, Unfortunately, I have to take down this T20 who's basically just YOLOing straight for the RD. I'm obviously just hoping to get the kill. And one thing that also is happening is that T21 who's behind the T20 is coming to get this RD. So I managed to kill the T20, and this is where I make a couple mistakes. Normally, I wouldn't consider these mistakes, but you can see I accidentally click the RD by mistake. That one bounced, thank God. Uh, and that's actually going to cost me a lot of time. I take a shot at the T21. Obviously, that one missed. The next one bounces. And what you'll realize is that's eight seconds that I could have been shooting or using to shoot at the people on C0, and I think that almost, I mean, that definitely makes the situation a, a lot worse. If I could be shooting at the Progetto right now, because the T21 could have been dead eight seconds ago, that would have been better, so I should have just kind of made those shots pen. Normally, I wouldn't consider that a mistake, but in this case, when they're pushing down the zero line, and I would have loved to be shooting at the zero line, that was a mistake, in my opinion. So, what I decide to do is I kind of am looking for shots. You'll notice this, again, takes a very long time, and I think that's a huge cost to my team right here. I'm able to get one shot into the Tiger, and because the Tiger's so aggressive, it's like I can't really stick around here. So what I do is I'm still going to try because I do want to shoot at these three tanks who are pushing in. So I put this house in between myself and the Tiger, and that allows us to look for shots in the Progetto. That one luckily goes in. It does 190 damage. And... We only managed to get two shots into the people pushing down the zero line, and if I could have gotten more, that would have resulted in more damage for us, and it would have made it easier for us to win the game, you know? So that was the situation I was in. If I was faster in killing the T21, uh, I obviously I had to kill the T21, and I had to kill the T20, but if I had killed those people faster, it would have been a lot easier throughout the end of the game. So that's what happened. So what I decided to do is I'm not going to stick around in B2 because they did have that Progetto 46 who can clip me out. They also have the P44 and the whatever this tank is, I can't see, the 3045. So I'm not going to deal with those four tanks alone when the entirety of my team was in the south. And so I just decided to move to where my team is because that's, as a support vehicle, you need to play with your teammates. So come down to the south, that creates an interesting position because we know where the M40 is now. We also know he's on full HP. Uh, we're going to move to help out this Cromwell B and maybe the IS is also joining us. And basically I'm just going to watch down this line to see if anyone makes a stupid play that I can take advantage 
of them for trying, you know? So that doesn't happen. The 35, 3045 moves all the way to the left, so I can't reasonably expect to get shots on him. And I see that this Tiger 1's a one-shot, so what I'm going to do with this Progetto down south, I can just kind of drive into the Tiger, expect not really to lose a lot of HP. And the thing is, I actually do end up losing a lot of HP right here. So even though this guy's a one-shot, I never would have expected this 3045 to notice me, especially with Chromo B and the IS right here. And so this ends up losing me a lot of HP. And once again, this makes it way more difficult for me in the end game. What I should have done is I should have just waited a second or so um, and not really engage the 3045 so aggressively. You can see it ended up losing me about 500 H 400 HP and that really screwed me over. So we've got a damaged gun here. We're killing the GW Panther. We do end up getting the kill, which is exactly what we need to do. The problem is now we've got this IS and this Progetto uh, like, the IS is on cap, and he's being chased down by a Progetto, likely a P43 and a Nashorn as well, and you'll notice the Nashorn actually hasn't been spotted all game, so he's full HP. So, what I do is I come to this corner, I look for shots, the Progetto isn't paying attention, so we're able to put one shot into him, and I make another mistake right here, I kind of drive forwards, expecting him not to be looking at me for whatever reason, and of course he's looking at me, I just shot him, so... I lose more HP. I'm down to 21 HP. I back up to see if anyone's here. You can see there's the Nashorn. We take a very un, like low percentage shot. Uh, it doesn't do any damage, but it was worth taking. And that's, you know, we're now a one shot. We've got this IS on cap and we're just going to wait for this Nashorn to cross. And unfortunately that one misses as well. So we're in this predicament here because the IS is obviously on cap. He's full HP. Um, the thing here is the IS shouldn't be on cap, right? Because he's got three people rushing towards him. The IS is in, an, in a really shitty position. And with a damaged gun, there's nothing I can do, especially with 21 HP. There's very little I can do because if I move around, I might get already and I'm probably not even going to hit my shots anyways. So what I decide to do, because I can't expect to snipe a Progetto, a Nashorn, and a P43 from basically B6, because that's where I'd be doing it from, I decide to go for someone who I can engage in a like close proximity because with a damaged gun, I can make that works. So I decide to go for Artie because I know the Artie's at K0 and that's a fight that I can take and kind of expect to win, especially if I'm not spotted, right? Obviously, if I got lit, I would expect to die from the Artie, but here I've got this bush in between myself and the M40. Unfortunately, that one bounces. So once again, if I had had not engaged that GW Panther, I would have had a good gun. That one would have penned and that would have been really great, but luckily we're able to get a second shot into that Artie. And now he's effectively a one shot because the average damage of this gun is 200 and that guy had 400 HP. So you, I got a low roll. I can kind of expect the next one to high roll. So I'm going to push into Artie. The reason is because I expect that Artie to be like crying for help really aggressively. So I'm going to be try to aggressively kill this guy before his support arrives. And we manage to do that. We get the kill on SM40 right here. The amazing thing is he doesn't light me. So the enemy doesn't know where I am. And so from here, I have this decision to make. Unfortunately, the Progetto gets, well, fortunately, actually, the Progetto gets lit immediately after I kill the Artie because he would have killed me if I had been any slower with that Artie. We get the kill, thank God, and we're up to our seventh kill. And now we've got this full HP Nashorn and this P43 Biss to deal with. So we spot the Nashorn. We know the P43 Biss just got off cap, so he's in, he's close to the cap circle. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for shots in this Nashorn because that guy's chasing me down. If someone's driving towards you, you can play the bush game and you can sort of expect to be chased down. And as they rush into you, you can take advantage of them. So I put a second shot into the Nashorn. He's now a one shot. And unfortunately, I missed this one. I shoot the building out of frustration because I kind of needed to kill him and I was just frustrated. And what happens there, which is interesting, is I get lit. So I'm assuming it's the Nashorn that spotted me. I don't know how or when he spotted me, but he did. And now I'm in this situation where I expect to, you see me looking to the left. That's because I expect the P43 Bisque to be flanking me from the left. So we've got this Nashorn in front of me. I expect to get flanked. And so what I decide to do is I decide to fall back as far as I can to bushes once again, so I can sort of take advantage of people as they drive into me. We know the Nashorn is a one shot. If I get unlucky, he's a two shot. And then we've also got this P43 Biss who's a uh, two shot pushing into me. So I take a shot that was low percentage. Unfortunately, it bounced. What I expect to happen is I kind of expected this Nashorn to poke to the left right here, so I'm, I'm going to be taking a shot where I think he is. That one doesn't go in, and the timing of it is such that if I had just waited and held my shot, I would have been able to just put a free shot into the P43, and it's unfortunate that that happened because, you know, could have killed the P43 by now. So this vehicle, this M40, just gets shots to my left. That tells me the Nashorn is just where I shot. It, I was wrong by about two seconds. He's right here. So what I do is I try to put the M43 between myself and him. And right now what I'm trying to do, because I'm in a light tank, I'm trying to side scrape this P43. So he puts a shot into my track. I can repair it and then get the kill. Unfortunately, you can see it's really hard with 160 ping and I angle slightly too much. And he actually manages to kill me without me being able to see him, which is hella frustrating. 
but you know at, at the end of the day that's a fucking 3852 damage game with seven kills so like i made mistakes in this obviously i think i played well for the most part uh the mistakes i highlighted are would be difficult for me to repair but obviously if you want to get better you want to take note of your mistakes and then work on them as you get into other games so that's this game in a nutshell let's go take a look at the end plates and we'll go from there <laughs> All right, so that was a mastery battle on a loss. We got a Pescucci's medal, which you get for killing two clickers. We also got a top gun because we got and we ended up getting seven kills. And in the end, we did 3,852 damage, seven kills, 1,003 base XP. So that's kind of what you can expect is the requirement to get a mastery badge in the WZ131. And uh, I mean, we did significantly better than pretty much everyone else on the team. But like I said, the mistakes I made could have actually ended up winning us those games if I hadn't made those mistakes. So it, it is what it is. No one else seemed to really have done their hit points, so you can't really do anything about that other than the RD and the VK, it seems. Um, but that that was the game. We ended up making 41,000 credits. That's because we had a personal reserve bonus. It would have been 27,500 credits less if we didn't have that bonus. That was 31 shots fired, 27 of them hit, 22 of them penned. And... Um, yeah, that battle lasted nine minutes. It was a pretty good game, in my opinion. We did a lot of moving around, especially for a map like Ensk. And I think, obviously, if I'd gone field, I would have died with when we had lost the field. But because I'd gone to the city, it did work out. So it's an interesting note. It's like taking plays that end up uh, keeping you alive for the entirety of the game, generally speaking, will actually result in better games than if I'd gone to like the field and died to clickers. So funnily enough, but... Uh, yeah, that's the video. If you want to see more, one thing you can do is you can actually subscribe to my Twitch channel with Twitch Prime. That, that's something you can do for free to support my channel, but you can also give this video a like and subscribe if you feel free. And um, yeah, I'm going to call the video here. So thanks for watching. Bye.